Hey guys, you're watching Help One Flash videos. I'm Arabda, and today we have got Raghavendra from Super Oracles joining us for this chat. Welcome to this uh, episode, Raghavendra, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thanks, Arabda, uh, for the invitation. So, regarding myself, I am Raghavendra Ramesh. I am joining from Brisbane, Australia. Um, I am a computer science PhD from Indian Institute of Science, graduated in the research area of formal methods. Um, and then I, uh, with the, after a brief stint in uh, IIIT Bangalore, I joined Oracle Labs here in Brisbane, working in the intersection of formal methods and um, and program analysis, building static analysis tools to identify security vulnerabilities in large pieces of Java code and stuff. Later, I uh, joined Consensus. I was attracted by, uh, by uh, blockchain space in general, and I wanted to make a shift for some time, and the consensus appeared to be the right place at the time, uh, and joined the bandwagon of Ethereum. There I started uh, uh, working with many teams and uh, working on many projects, atomic uh, cross-chain projects, and formally verifying um, consensus algorithms, and uh, working in the statelessness area of Ethereum space. Typically, these were the three mainstream lines. And after that, I met with uh, Joshua Topkin, who is uh, CEO of uh, Supra Oracles. And he got me interested to in this project of Supra, where uh, he was start, starting to build a, uh, build a team, a uh, research team, actually, for a very ambitious, I would say, at the time, uh, the goal of Supra Oracles. Um, we were uh, discussing with uh, Dr. Aniket Kate, who is uh, uh, famous for his... Uh, uh, KZG commitments, which is used and in, in many projects in blockchain space. Um, yeah, and then uh, he motivated me to join, and uh, I'm here. I'm very, very excited to be in Supra. Lovely, great to hear the journey thus far, and it's definitely been a lot of research stints for you. So, how did Supra Oracles begin? What's the origin story behind the company itself? I think, uh, yeah, the best things uh, from the founders that I have heard is like um, the the intuition that I gather is uh, there are there are many projects you know the the innovation and uh, the funding drives this way that you you try to pitch in uh, for a niche project and uh, that try getting funds and stuff so but uh, our founders were wondering like why don't we build uh, many things put together so that um, you know we have the edge towards scalability. And uh, we tried to offer multiple services and goods together. So it was a very ambitious goal. And, and there were a lot of uh, um, Oracle hacks at that time, you know, during DeFi summer. And that also motivated to look into the space of uh, blockchain oracles, This, which is a critical piece of infrastructure, which uh, uh, you know enjoys blockchains to the rest of the world. To, uh, connecting off chain to the on chain so uh, and then uh, you know our ceo and initial uh, founders they looked into this problem fundamentally and originally and they thought they could make a difference they could bring in original concepts and change uh, for better so that was the start actually got it and so without further ado why don't you tell us a little bit more about super oracles itself and what it does yeah, so right now, Supra Oracles is offering, um, you know, uh, the VRF, which is Verifiable Random Compute, Verifiable Random Function service on uh, many mainnets and testnets. And also um, DORA, what we call as Distributed Oracle Agreement Protocol, uh, in again on uh, many mainnets and, uh, and testnets. Mainnets will soon be, but majorly we are on uh, SWE testnet and um, uh, many EVM testnets. Similarly, uh, for VRF, we are on Ethereum, we are on Orbitrum and testnets, and all the details are available on the Supra website. So, and we uh, put the research first as our um, as our emphasis. So that means we wanted to design something better at every component, at every brick of the building. So, so that we managed to establish, and our uh, VRF paper is uh, accepted it accepted and also presented at Asia uh, Computer um, Communication Security Conference 2023. Um, 
so and um, and the dora protocol which is the oracle service protocol is uh, scheduled to be presented in a prestigious international conference on distributed computing society conference again in hong kong, in, in hong kong next month next month actually so uh, for the oracle service we come up with a fundamental insight wherein uh, we reduce uh, the super majority requirement to a simple majority requirement. Super majority requirement is typically two-thirds of the requirement uh, to um, solve the problem in a Byzantine tolerant way. We come up with a simple majority way. That's the key insight. And the paper is all, all there to, uh, to be uh, read. And, um, and we have uh, lots of we have videos on these uh, topics as well, as well as long form blog posts as well. The fundamental insight was to be true to the VRF, like uh, the fundamental properties that a VRF, a verifiable random function should satisfy is unbiasability, unpredictability, and um, randomness, right? So all these things can be offered in a centralized fashion, but uh, then that becomes a um, centralized point of things in a decentralized world, which is which is uh, not preferable, right? And uh, our innovation was to do it in a decentralized way and a very efficient way. So this was the concept here. Fantastic. Yeah, that's definitely against the decentralized philosophy, right? So uh, great to hear of all the progress here. You also alluded to some very strategic partnerships with uh, SUI, Arbitrum, EDM. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about that. How did you go about deciding also who, which were the strategic partners here? Yeah, so um, we started off with VRF and Dora, and um, but we have many more things to come. These are just uh, kind of teasing the market with the initial offerings, actually. Um, uh, and uh, we we are bullish with respect to our Moo ecosystem. So with respect to the Moo Lang, uh, uh, we saw that you know the smart contracts language or the language that need to be designed was thought out from fundamental um, uh, fundamentally for the blockchain world from the beginning was Moolang from the DM project of Facebook and later with Aptos and there are multiple forks of uh, Moo and uh, finally extended with respect to uh, Sway. We are widespread and uh, we wanted to be catering to all the Moo ecosystem and community and our products are available both on EBM chains as well as Moo chains. And which we, uh, they are they are the upcoming new chain with Aptos and Sui. So we always uh, partnered and we wanted to serve the uh, DAP space on Sui as well. So, and we get, got into a, a talking and uh, Sui people were very, very happy that we will be also entering into a Moo ecosystem. And that's the partnership happened. And uh, there are grants with, uh, you know, uh, six figure grants and stuff. So to enable us and uh, to also, for them to be benefited and for the projects on their chain to be benefited as well. Our VRF is live on 27 EVM chains and uh, you know uh, two non-EVM, that's Aptos and uh, uh, Sway testnets. And on mainnets, uh, we have we are on Arbitrum and we are on Arbitrum mainnet actually for VRF. Okay, fantastic. Looking forward to uh, seeing Super Oracle's live on all of that. And um, speaking of, can you tell us a little bit more about the role of the super token itself in the entire ecosystem? Yeah, sure. Um, as I said, uh, we would like to position ourselves uh, as an intra-layer. You know, we are kind of uh, redefining the term here and uh, taking liberty in changing the semantics of things. We would want to view the whole blockchain world as one layer and we want to be an intra-layer connecting things around connecting thing, connecting L1s and L2s and off-chain world together. Um, so we, the whole notion needs to pack in value into the token. You know, when you are the Oracle, when you're, when you're highly performant, efficient Oracle and highly secure Oracle to begin with, and then you have a VRF service. So, and we, we are coming up with a smart contract based move platform. Uh, and then after that is when our next offering comes, which is a bridge. So with this, we would position as an intra-layer and this will give uh, for the node operators uh, a, a packed in value for the tokens. So the, hence the Supra token will be uh, very valued is our, uh, is our thesis. 
and also this is for node operators for general public for general users it's not that we are competing against one company or another philosophy or another design or something we uh, would want the whole blockchain to succeed you know as an idea as a philosophy as an ideology hence we would we fundamentally see that there is a larger pie to be taken we would want more and more users to be enrolled so that's been i think uh, well known in blockchain space to be to involve more users onto our, on on board onto the blockchain space and make them engaged so similarly with the same uh, idea and intention and with more towards the education uh, and to enable people who are just have who just have smart co- smartphone internet enabled smartphone to be interact with blockchain based services they should not be devoid of the information they should not be devoid of all the things that are good out there so we have designed some gamified based um, uh, uh, small games on our website and we are launching it as uh, project blast off uh, it's already live where any user can sign in enroll and get themselves to be enrolled for an year drop uh super tokens okay so they there will be there will be some small quizzes there will be some games to uh, play with more towards oriented towards uh, blockchain education and uh, user experience based education it's not a tech education or something but so that they get involved so that was uh, the pro- project blast off where users can associate themselves with supra and get uh, supra aird, um, airdrop that and for the node operator side uh, told you already the value of the super token yeah so i can would like to mention um, another program called snap so that is a, a supra network activate program so this is for the app creators the app creators on different chains they would want to use a, a randomness service on chain for example a gamify app for example a lottery app any kind of a gambling app on uh, on chain uh, they can hook into our vr of service or we are presence is there our integrations are well documented and we have a complete support support system um similarly for oracle for price feeds for off chain data you can uh, uh, one can hook up to our uh, oracle services we as part of this program would serve without fee for 6 months it's once enrolled and after 6 months depending on the supra tokens you have and the supra tokens you stake you are entitled to get uh, around 90% discounts for another 18 months so in total for 2 years there is this promotional offer to you know take almost for free the dora, dora services and uh, vrf services um, so that we would want people to see the taste and quality of our offerings and be engaged with it so these are the multiple ways where user can engage as well as see the pa- the value of the super token here yeah. wow i especially love that incentivization uh, objectives that you guys have in uh, line definitely good for adoption and for people to check out uh, the token itself and how the ecosystem functions as a whole all right so we talked about a lot of technology and technological in- innovation so we cannot leave security far behind so what was your internal security strategy when you were designing super oracles yeah the security st- strategy has to be comprehensive right uh, the whole blockchain space has to thrive on security we don't have uh, we don't have a government centralized government body sitting and uh, uh, locking people up or something we should not or uh, that's the that's the ideal we might not end up there but we will have some perhaps middle ground but uh, the fundamental thesis is the technology itself to be super super secure so so that's uh, uh, first of all our cryptography team is very talented and um, uh, you know our te- technologies are published in peer review peer reviewed venues so they are peer reviewed and very robust to begin with secondly uh, we take uh, security to be the first priority than liveness or efficiency so security comes first um so that shows in all of our designs actually uh, the the even though the security comes first most of our original thought has been how to make it more scalable so that's why we came up with multiple ideas regarding uh, you know super majority to simple majority as i said where in order to to- tolerate 10 faults 
how can you get work from uh, 21 nodes instead of 31 nodes? So that's when uh, the security gets combined with efficiency and stuff. So this is at the research level, at the distributed computer, level, distributed systems level. Next comes, this is more or less at the infrastructure level, at a very conceptual level. Next comes the programming language level. The choice of smart contracts as a platform itself shows the, uh, you know, the emphasis towards security that we have. We would want the projects that are uh, that we integrate with to be highly secure uh, and stuff. So that's where we are turning towards move uh, a lot. That means uh, we are uh, EVM anyway. Ethereum also has to be serviced, and uh, we have good focus on Ethereum because a lot of innovation and development has happened on Ethereum. Even though Ethereum was not the first choice in terms of uh, uh, blockchain security, Ethereum has managed to evolve itself with multiple libraries and uh, audit frameworks and tools so that people are writing secure code on Ethereum as well. So Ethereum cannot be divorced with and should not be. So, so there's also there. So at the programming language level, we have our own internal audits. We have uh, multiple independent auditors auditing our code as well. And then we come to the uh, reputed people like you uh, to get audited and uh, you know uh, as a show of confidence to us and to the world uh, that look at our code and see and the implementation programming language is also rust which is uh, known for its uh, you know memory safety and uh, security inbuilt in the, uh, into the compiler system itself this is how uh, we make up and our chief security officer is uh, dr david young uh, he, uh, he makes sure of uh, many of the cybersecurity practices and uh, uh, DevOps, uh, DevSecOps practices to be in place as well. So from all, all angles, we would want to cover our bases and um, uh, we would want to uh, see this design go through. So from research, as I said, from engineering, from uh, intrusion detection, um, and for, for rolling out things, we are rolling out in phases. Our phase is mainnet alpha. We don't make any, uh, we don't hide anything here. Mainnet alpha means our offerings are centralized right now. It's con our nodes are controlled by us. But we will even, we will uh, very slowly in the following weeks and months open our nodes for public participation, KYC, and then decentralized later. So it's a, it's a progressive. Uh, operations, secure operations mechanism as well. And where does an external security, cybersecurity partner come in and why Halbon in particular? Well, Halbon is a big name and uh, very truly uh, they are doing a lot of things uh, which which will help uh, not only for their own clients, for uh, for the space actually. I mean, one can only have to glance the website to see the amount of tools they have made it open source. And the amount of blocks they have written, uh, it's the quality that shows, and that uh, and the talent that they they have, it shows from their audit reports as well, right? The kind of tools they use, symbolic analysis tools, um, formal verification tools, the simple linters, checkers, and the amount of brain power that goes in into audit. I, I can understand that because I come from formal analysis and I myself have built static analysis tool at Oracle Labs. So these are very tough problems, actually, and uh, there are a lot at stake, you know, uh, because these are the programs that carry money, not our own money in terms of millions of dollars. So any unformed flaw is kind of a repute damage as well as perhaps a catastrophe, right? So there, there lies a lot of uh, onus and burden on people like auditors, and Halpern has been successfully carrying this uh, burden for so long. So... It is definitely a, a, a you know matter of privilege to be associated with uh, Holborn and work with you, guys. All right. So this has been a lovely chat thus far, Raghavendra, and I'll be personally looking forward to all the Super Oracles uh, updates as well. Uh, so thank you again for taking the time and talking to us today. 